Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Peak and Geek video. My name is Rob, Gamertag Robrick, and today we have got a Peak Models video for you. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Stormhawk Interceptor as you can see by the titles. And this is just a step-by-step -step guide, just as a tutorial on how I painted the model. And it's done in my faction colours, it's sort of a camo effect. So this might be useful for anybody that's wanting to extrapolate the skills and put it to their own models. That being said, I have got a number of 40k armies on the go. I've also got some Age of Sigma armies and some Lord of the Rings armies. So be sure to check us out as we do more how to guides. As always, we hope you enjoy this video. But if you feel as if we've earned it, then please do hit that like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon for more notifications when more videos go up online. Also, if there's anything that you want, advice, tips, or you're a bit unsure how I did a certain technique, then please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. I'm more than happy to help. But that being said, let's start the very first tutorial. So here we are guys. First of all, I just want to apologise for the quality of the video in some areas. It might get a little bit choppy, but I am recording off my phone. So I do hope to get a little bit better as time goes on and I learn a few more techniques, shall we say, get a few more bits of kit in order to help me produce the videos a little bit better. So just bear with me for the first couple of videos. So this is the full kit uh, already assembled, as you can see, and I have to be very careful it took me around about three hours but I was did have quite a few distractions and I did notice that I have to be careful that I was gluing things in the right area because the kit can be assembled in one or two ways it can produce um, either a Stormhawk interceptor or a, a completely different model I forget what the actual model is called but as you can see this is the finished article and I just filed down the uh, plastic as I went and just made sure that it was neat finished. So I'm going to prime it using a Chaos Black in a spray. And I also used a little bit of grey sear to give it a bit of a light texture on the top. As you can see, the light I'm wanting to portray is coming in from this direction. And I just want it to be a little bit lighter on top, just giving that more a realistic approach. So what I'm going to use now is Castellan Green to cover the entire model. I'm not actually going to paint over the engines or anything like that as they're going to remain black. As you can see, I'm just watering down the green just to make sure that the paint can be applied evenly without streaking. I will apply a couple of thin coats in order to, to get the desired effect. Now you can see that all this is done and it looks pretty good. So now it is time to add, as you can see, just turn the model all the way around so you can see. I'm actually getting all the recesses, still leaving the engines blank. And I left also the guns because that's going to be done in a bolt gun metal or lead belcher they call it now. So now I'm just going to use a Zandri dust in order to start the camo effect. Again, watering it down, just a little bit of water on the paintbrush, therefore I can apply the paint evenly and thinly as to not obscure the detail. I'm then going to apply it, coming at it at a slight angle and just moving on across the body of the, the vehicle. And as you can see, I'm just going down, still keeping that sort of zigzag proportion, that zigzag shape and applying it and just adding a little bit more until I get the desired effect. Keep doing this to the entirety of the model. Now you can see that I've done this and it's looking pretty good. 
and as you can see I've joined up in some areas and I've also just tried to keep that general sort of zigzag shape but I've made sure that if I've gone down a certain part of the body that I have also painted the sides so it adds the continuity of the camo effect. Next I am going to use Lead Belcher to paint the engines and the guns. I shall also be neatening up the inside of the engines with Abandoned Black. So here we go guys, at this stage all I would be looking at now is to put a, another coat of Xandri dust on any sort of parts that may be quite thin. Also use this time to touch up any Castellan green areas in coats, bearing in mind that you don't want to be obscuring any detail, so nice watered down thin coats. Better to apply three thin coats than one thick coat. Next I use the Null Oil Shade. And as you can see, I have used it within all the recesses, just trying to bring out that detail guys. This is the time to start putting it on the two wing guns as well as the engines. I like to apply it quite generously, there are some people out there that like to apply it quite thinly, so it is a matter of choice. Remember though, you don't want to be pooling the shade, you just want it to have a generous covering over the, the model in the recesses and I just use a thin paintbrush just to go around all the little sort of the, the, the flaps and the rivets and it just helps bring out that detail. Now I'm going to use Corn Red and Mephiston Red to paint the rockets in the rocket launcher. So I use the corn red first as the base and then on the tips I just use the Mephiston red in order to give it a bit of detail and I also took the liberty of painting some of the lights or the sensors, whatever they are, just at the front again using the corn red first and then a tiny dab Mephiston red just to give it that bit of detail. I am now going to use Zandri Dust to paint the gun barrels because I forgot before. I also use Zandri Dust to paint the emblem on the front. Remember, nice thin coats to not obscure any detail. Next I'm going to use Avalon Sunset and Flash Git Yellow. As you can see this was for the gun barrel and I used Avalon Sunset first and then I highlighted using the Flash Git Yellow. Now I use Agrag Surf Shade on the emblem to bring out the detail. I also use Hot Blue to paint some more of the sensors. Remember the guys, this is completely your preference. Just paint the sensors however, whichever colours you want. Now I use Wall Boss Green and Skarsnik Green. I use the Wall Boss Green first and then I highlight it with the Skarsnik Green. And remember you just need a little damp. This is for the sensors and I also paint the front emblem in Gehenna's Gold. For the remaining sensors I use Gene Steeler Purple and Fire Dragon Bright. Now it is time to highlight the camo, so I am using Yashabiti Bone for the areas with Zandri Dust and I am using Lorem Forest for the Castellan Green areas. So in order to highlight the camo I just used the Yashabiti Bone to go along the edges where the Castellan Green and the Zandri Dust meet. I always go on the inside so the Yashabiti Bone I would go, I would use on the Zandri Dust and the Lorem Forest I would use on the Castellan Green and this just helps bring out the detail a little bit further for the camo. I also apply a dry brush of Lorem Forest 
just on the Castellan Green areas, so just around the on the edges, I use, like I say, a dry brush technique, and I do the same with the Shabbaty Bone on the Zandri Dust areas, and this just helps the detail pop on the model. So guys, while we wait for the model to dry, let's get cracking on the base. So the base comes in three parts. There's a cross head that you stick inside the model and that's what the model sits on. Then as you can see, there's this sort of see-through stem to make it look as if it's flying and the little ball on the end that's what the model goes into and then obviously there's the black base itself so after thinking carefully about the position of the model I mark off where I want the model to stand on the base I do this because I want to paint the base without actually getting anything on the see-through plastic. In my opinion, the base is just as important as the model, so it's important to have a bit of a thing, maybe wanting to put in a little bit of extra detail. Some of the kits come with extra bits and pieces, and it just adds a bit of personality to the model. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna keep it simple. Now that my model's dry, I will quickly apply a dry brush of Runefang steel to all the lead belcher areas. Going back to the base again, I use PVA glue to paint outside the marked area, and then when it's dry, I then paint the entire model a couple of times with a Mechanica Standard Grey, remembering using a bit of water to thin coat, and wait till it's completely dry to continue. As you can see, this is dry now. With the Mechanica Standard Grey, you can paint inside the marked area, but I just made sure that the entire base, including the sides, got a good coverage. And now you use non-oil to shade the base. I like to apply this quite generously. I think it gives quite a good shading effect if you do. Again, guys, wait until completely dry to continue. Next, I use Celestra Grey and apply a dry brush to the base. Finally, I glue the stem to the base, but for me, I haven't glued the model to the stem. Now, I've done this because I want to be able to transport it places to and from, and I didn't really want there being a risk of the stem breaking or, it's, or the model breaking, so I personally haven't glued the model to the stem, but this can be done if this is your preference. I just like to finish off with a little bit of Army Painter foliage you can buy on Amazon or from uh, many different retailers online or hobby shops and I think that this static grass uh, effect just sort of gives a little bit of character to the base. Like I say, with the base you can go as mad as you like but like I say, I wanted to keep this quite simple and I'm quite happy with just a few tufts of grass. So there you have it guys, the finished article. We do hope that you enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you're unsure about or any particular techniques that I used that you want answering, any questions at all, then please be sure to give us a comment below and I will get back to you. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel for Pika Geek as well as the Pika Geek website www.pikageek.co.uk and also be sure to check out future videos that we're going to be doing a lot more. Like I said at the beginning, we have got some Age of Sigma armies, some Lord of the Rings armies, as well as the 40k stuff. So be sure to check that out as well. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for joining me, and take care. We will see you on the next video.